in the zone volume 2 blackface fenders so uh, I have a beautiful example of a uh, mid to late 60s uh, blackface fender super reverb here uh, 410 just a gorgeous gorgeous sounding amplifier you heard it at, uh, at the beginning of the video there and spoiler alert I already dialed it into the zone found a setting that sounded just great and more on that in just a second to get these tones I'm micing up with a uh, Sterling Audio ribbon mic and an SM57 you can see that they're back from the amp just about an inch or an inch and a half also have this guy back in the room. This is a Sterling Audio condenser microphone, uh, and I got it set in an Omni pattern to kind of pick up the tone of the whole room. First off, I just want to point something out—a little bit, little piece of information here. Uh, with with these Fender amplifiers, blackface from the from the you know it could be anywhere from '64 through like '67, something like that. Generally, though, if you find one that says Fender Musical Instruments on it underneath, you know, Super Reverb it says here and says Fender Musical Instruments. That means it's probably 66 or 67, something like that, because uh, Fender started making acoustic guitars around then. They, they used to say Fender Electric Instruments on the front. So if you find one that says Fender Electric Instruments, probably like a 64, something like that. So I don't know exactly where the date, you know, where they went to the Fender Musical Instruments on the front of the amp, but it's just it's something good to know. Know that if it says Fender Musical Instruments, it's probably a little, it's a little bit later. Fender Electric Instruments means it's probably like 64 if it's a black face amplifier. Uh, about 40 watts, 6L6, uh, famously used by folks like uh, Steve Ray Vaughan, um, who often use super reverbs in conjunction with a pair of vibro verbs, which are like 115 style amps. These have four 10 inch speakers. Um, who else uses the, the super reverb? Uh, Michael Landau really likes them, I know that. Um, Ronnie Earl, he's another one, blues player, loves, loves super reverbs. They're just terrific sounding amplifiers with their 410 inch speakers and 40 watts is just a perfect amount of volume to get your guitar with a decent amount of headroom still just over the drums and kind of be able to compete with a band. 40 watts is a really, really nice number. So I've kind of been on a little bit of a tear lately about um, a, a trend that I'm seeing and I want to use this Amps in the Zone video to address this trend. The trend is towards really really low sound on stages if people aren't going the modeling route they're using a traditional guitar amp more often than not you'll see them with something like a you know blues deluxe or, or hot rod deville or something like that the, the the fender amplifiers of the day you know and they've got them turned barely on they're on like one on the volume control and then they're hitting them with pedals for their tones their drive tones and kind of relying totally on the pa 
Um, and this is sort of uh, a, a common thing that I'm seeing more and more, and it's something that uh, that I know is being kind of pushed by sound guys and clubs, and also players are maybe sort of getting used to, to playing guitar this way. But I just want to point out that when I started the video, I hit some chords hard on the bridge pickup, and they were slightly distorted. Now, I've got this amp set on five right now. <laughs> Um, it ain't that loud actually. It's like it's it's a nice volume, you know. I just probably shouldn't be sitting down. It'd be better if I was standing up with <laughs> my ears a little bit away from the speakers. But my point is this. Uh, I'm making this sacrifice so that I can make this point. My point is this: is that the amp sounds terrific set like this. 40 watts. It's on about five. It sounds great. And maybe that's as loud as you need to be, you know, in a in a club. When your ball's out, going for a solo, going for an aggressive rhythm part, something like that, maybe you're even hitting it with a pedal at that volume for more distortion. So the point being that after I played those first initial chords, what you heard me do is roll the volume down on the guitar and then start playing Lenny by Stevie Ray Vaughan. Breaking up a little bit, it's really pure, it sounds beautiful, but what I can do is, you know, go to maybe the, the neck pickup or to the, uh, the number two position, and then I can roll the volume on the guitar down to like about seven. And get that beautiful kind of chime like I was getting for that, the, the, the Lenny part. It's totally clean. And what you've got is you got some horsepower in reserve then on your guitar. Now, if, if I was, let's just experiment for a second here. Let's roll the volume on the amp down, okay, so that I'm getting about the same volume as I am right now, but with the volume on seven on the guitar, I'm gonna roll the guitar all the way up and then I wanna roll the, 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 the volume on the amp down to match the volume. <laughs> but I'm running the amp on about three or three and a half, okay? But I've got nowhere to go as far as volume goes now, as far as headroom goes. You know, with, with the volume down on the guitar around seven, I get a really, really great clean tone when the amp's up around five. <laughs> And then I can roll up the volume, hit the bridge pickup. And you got somewhere to go with your audience. All you gotta do is hit that bridge pickup, roll the volume all the way up, and you've got... You got some horsepower in reserve. You got some headroom. You got somewhere to go on the guitar. And this is a really, really important thing because you can play more dynamically. You can punch the audience when it comes time to, and then you can roll down and lighten up on the guitar. You know, I, I really think it's sort of the lost art of the volume control on the guitar. So maybe when you're at soundcheck next time, if, if you use an amp that's like a clean amp, and you're using it with pedals and stuff like that, just experiment with turning up the amp more and rolling your guitar down, you know, as low as four or five on the volume control, enough to get the tone as clean as, as say it was before when you were running your amp on like one. You know, but turn your amp up to three or four, roll the volume down on your guitar, get that, so when the guy says, okay, give me some guitar, have the volume on your guitar rolled way, way down, you know, play some guitar, you know, at that level, and then you don't ever have to actually show them that full-on, full-bore tone. Trust me, when you get to the gig and you turn up, when it comes time to take a solo and you roll your guitar all the way up, it's just going to sound great. You know, yeah, it's going to be louder, but the drummer's also going to be playing louder. Everybody's going to be laying into it because there's going to be the energy of the gig and it's just gonna be a really, really cool thing. Incidentally, the setting I have the amp on is really, really similar to the way that Stevie used to set his Blackface Supers when I used them, which was the volume on about five or five and a half, and the treble almost cranked, yeah, I don't know, nine. I'm running it on eight, just a little bit lower. Bright switch on, sounds like it's gonna be really incredibly bright, right? But it's not too bad, it sounds just great. Uh, I've got the mids almost cranked, they're on about nine, and I'm running the bass on about four, 
Um, and uh, Stevie used to run the bass on like two, but he used 13s, really, really heavy strings. So I, I'm finding I can get away with a little bit more bass on this particular Super Reverb. 